four young women disappear in 1997. It's a mystery that baffles investigators and fuels their family's quest for answers for almost 25 years. The first to vanish is Laura Smither, just 12 years old. What was Laura like? Oh, she was a joy. She was so sweet and so caring and so loyal, fiercely loyal to all her girlfriends. She was one of my best friends. We spent a lot of time together. Everybody loved Laura. She was just one of those people, I always say she was touched by light because everybody loved her. She was the friend that would come over to your house and make you look bad because she would help put away <laughs> the dishes after dinner. And Laura wasn't perfect. She was a normal kid, but she was very smart, wickedly smart. She could have done anything. She would have turned 13. She'd been counting down the days for 87 days. It's about to become she a teenager. She was so excited to become a teenager. In 1997, Friendswood was just a very quiet, small town. So we're about halfway between the city of Houston and Galveston. In 97, we had been voted one of the top 10 safest cities in America. Laura lived near the creek, and their house was kind of magical because I would go there, and they would always have the computers going, and we could go outside and explore and climb trees. There wasn't a lot of development in the area. It was a quiet country road. So Laura lived on Weird Dairy at the end, and so if we were in the kitchen, you could see right to the end of the road from inside the house. Laura wanted to be a professional ballerina. She had just gotten accepted into the Houston Ballet Academy. Ballet was probably the most important part of her life besides her family. She loved to dance. She was always choreographing little pieces and she'd put on little plays for us. She started when she was six. She did ballet, tap and jazz. Wow, for six years. But she just really loved ballet more than anything. Take me back to April 3rd, 1997. What are you doing that morning here? It was a Thursday, and because I'd been out of town, I said, OK, we'll do pancakes with bacon, which was Laura's favorite. She'd just finished reading a book, and it was all about running and exercise and building your endurance. She felt that if she did that, she could hold her arabesque longer, and it would make her stronger for ballet. And her dad was a runner. He ran every day. so. I granted her permission to go running while we fixed breakfast. And of course, she didn't come back. We knew immediately that something was wrong, immediately. And we called the police within an hour of that happening. But our top story tonight, she's only 12 years old, and at this hour, she's missing. It made the news that first day. While police concentrate the search near the girl's home, her parents wait and hope. It's just been concentrated here around the house. As far as I know, there are some open fields that uh, she might have run by, and uh, they've, you know, searched those areas very thoroughly. She is a, a very good girl. She, something, something very unusual has happened that she would have been home. Someone had to have taken her. The search continues this morning for a missing 12-year-old Friendswood girl. Did you see anything unusual at this time yesterday? Nothing. Did you see my daughter? I ended up running the ground search, and I was drinking from my fire hose. Hundreds of people flooded to come help us search, and then it just exploded. Overnight, family, friends blanketed the neighborhood with flyers. At daylight, a small army of searchers fanned out. Lori's dad went out with the first wave of volunteers, grateful for all the support. Someone encouraged by the turnout this morning. I've been overwhelmed by the community support and the police. What was it like for you and your family last night? Uh, don't ask me. Laura was a 12-year-old little girl 
and it just touched people. The community of uh, Friendswood is very close, and uh, they felt that Laura was well their own. I'm going home. I'm going to hug my kids and uh, kind of regroup a little bit, and I'll be ready to run in the morning. People from all over Houston put their lives on hold. The best came out of some people. We offer it to you and pray that you would watch over Laura wherever she is. People of different denominations, different faiths, all showing up together to, to pray for this child. Hoping that maybe that will have some power. I just want to let her know that we are going to find you. And we're not going to stop until we do find you. Uh, please keep her in your prayers. The FBI has been called in on this search. And now police are calling it an abduction. Their parents grow more frantic by the hour. Volunteers trudge through swamps and dodge snakes. But by day's end, there was nothing to report. It was a tough search for anyone involved in, in being out there. They, that went on for days. They covered over 75 square miles. They plan to do the same thing again until Laura is found. There is a maximum commitment to find you and do everything the law permits to bring you to justice. Just about every police agency in the area was involved in the search. You have a 12-year-old girl who goes jogging at 9 o'clock in the morning. And for whatever reason, uh, no one saw anything. She was here one second and gone the next. We were worried that whoever took her was still out there and that we could be the next one. And our top story this morning, what could be a nightmare comes true. It's like deja vu. Somebody had to have taken her. It's like she just disappeared. It has almost picture perfect ties to the Smither case. The entire community was in fear. Yes. There's a killer on the loose. Exactly. 